Hello, hello, patriots, viewers, subscribers. The Yuma Sun, Saturday, June 29th. It is now Sunday. Yuma BP unveils temporary tent site for migrants. Facility here will process and house families of and unaccompanied children. By James Gilbert. James Gilbert of the Yuma Sun gets credit for this. Please do not give me any strikes. I'll just go like this, and you can always pause the screen and hopefully be able to read it just fine. I'll go closer. I'll show you the pictures. Look at the size of that. I've met him before. He's one of, I believe he's one of my regulars. I've seen him before. Pero Guerra. Pero Guerra. Is there anything like Guerra Loca? Because I'm the Guerra Loca. They called me the crazy blonde. I was some lady used to when I was had blonde hair. Now it's gray. Contract personnel work at cleaning the migrant processing pod. This was Saturday's newspaper. Do you see this? I don't believe they got that in concentration camps. In fact, when I met Ellie Vicell in high school, my junior year at Tottenville High School, 88 to 89, the writer and author of Night, he was a Jew taken to Auschwitz where he met his wife as a child, a young man. They both survived it. His family did not. I couldn't complete the book in high school because even then, it was hard. You want to call that a concentration camp? Really? Another killing is reported in San Luis Rio, Colorado. Let me see about this. Oh wait, what was this? A motorist on Friday became the 10th homicide victim recorded in San Luis Rio Colorado within a month. The Border City News Media reported that an unidentified man was driving alone in a vehicle on Calle 26 in Avenida Reforma Agraria on, about, on the city's south side at about noon when he was struck by gunfire from another vehicle. He was rushed to a hospital where he later died. Homicides for the first six months of the year have exceeded 40, surpassing the 12-month totals in each of several previous years. Authorities contribute most of the killings to fighting between rebel drug trafficking groups. Earlier this week, a man later identified as Benjamin Castro, was 37, was fatally shot in front of his home at Avenida Mexico B in Calle 40, 40, on the city's southeast side. Neighbors said they heard the shots and saw a vehicle fleeing the area. Surprisingly, no arrests have been made. AP explains the law criminalizing improper border crossings. What is the law? The law is called illegal entry. And it makes unauthorized border crossings a crime. The law specifically bars entry into the U.S. at places other than through ports of entry, like an airport or bridge on the Mexican-U.S. border. A violation of the law, also known as Section 1325, is a misdemeanor with a penalty of six months in prison. The most are sen sentenced to time served. A second offense or illegal reentry is a felony. Ooh. -hoo. Felony. Oh, I think I just shit myself. Not. Critics say the U.S. government doesn't have the resources to pr prosecute every case. And the focus should be on more dangerous criminals. Advocates say prosecuting the cases deters illegal immigration. Though data on the topic is limited. Mm-hmm. Oh, Roberta. I'm going to go have me another snack. I don't feel like doing these reports about the 
How about the topic of how many illegal immigrants have been deterred by by prosecuting all their cases? Fuck them numbers. Who gives a shit? For decades, the government didn't actively pursue criminal cases under Section 1325, which has been on the books since 1929. It is now 19... or 2019. Oh, man. 1919. Good luck on that, Marianne. Yeah, I need to go to work. I don't want to go to work. Those caught were deported by immigration enforcement. And I'm going to tell you right now, they are large white buses with no writing on either side or the back. They have very dark tinted windows and they're rather higher up and it looks just like a school bus. Those are your deportees. Do you know how many times over the years I would see them go over 32nd Street every day? Do you want to know how many buses every day I would see when I worked at the Circle K? At the airport store, Pacific and 32nd. About seven, eight a day. A day. And I was with the company until 2011. It's now 2019. I wonder how many more are going down that road now. A lot. How's it been used? And what's happening now? Well, basically, let me tell you what's happening now. My nation has lost its sovereignty. My town is becoming a freaking romp around room just for anybody and everybody who wants to come through, walks into stores, asks for stuff in Spanish, can't speak a damn lick of English. They move to a country where they can't speak any other language. Some of them. A few of them have been here before. And now with this, yeah, I, um, I don't think that, I don't think it's going to be very good. I think I'm going to have to be, like, really brushing up on some Spanish, and I have a feeling I'll be learning some more. Yeah, nobody cares about moving day. As long as I ain't the one moving. Oh, okay. Here you go. Here's more of your tents. A bank of refrigerators will be counted on to keep perishable foods, items, and other supplies freshly inside the migrant processing pod at the U.S. Border Patrol Yuma Sector Headquarters at 4035 South Avenue A. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Headquarters for Border Patrol Yuma Sector is at 4035 South Avenue A. And I spoke with, just the other morning, a senior officer with the Border Patrol. And I asked him something. I said, Do they not understand that you're a human being too? I mean, how is this affecting you? He said, I'm emotionally, mentally, and physically exhausted. It takes a lot of energy to take in such pain that you see. People forget that when we're in a uniform, we're still a human being in a uniform. We are a breathing, bleeding, feeling human being wearing a uniform. We have wives, we have children, we have grandchildren, we have sisters and brothers, mothers and fathers. If you think that seeing any of this does not affect us in any way whatsoever that eventually you become anesthetized to it, where it seems the norm it is now your new normal, you've been on the planet then. I show no emotion because I cannot. Not because it shows weakness. Because it will break me. I will be a pile of clothing upon the floor sobbing. A shell of what used to be a human being. This is what I see every day. And I am in a position in which there is a duty that I swore I would fulfill. That I would give my life for it because I believe in this nation and its freedoms and its citizens and its rights. They're the same ones that my children and myself and my future children 
will experience. And that is what I fight for. I understand going through. And I feel for them. But as an officer of the law, a federal officer protecting my nation's sovereignty, I must do what I must do. Like the promises I make to my children, I made a promise to my nation that I will protect it. This is part of the job.